video I'll be showing you how to make a basic ancestor altar to learn how to better communicate and build a relationship with your ancestors, your spirit guides, your angels, your spiritual teachers, all that. Anyone who is your higher power that you pray to, even just if you want to leave it for God, the highest creator, you can um, start with the basic ancestor altar. So what you would need to start is your candle, a glass of water, picture of your ancestor, their names. These are just some extra things that I added here. Sage for cleansing, Palo Santo for cleansing, flowers, crystals, um, for their energy, also little candies just to get to my ancestors. This is not my personal altar. This is just an example I put together um, for this video. This is where I do my spiritual work for my clients. My ancestors did not want to be on video. So I made this little setup just to give an example for my clients and those who are looking um, on how to start their spiritual journey and, and just an easy setup to do because I know some people are like, oh, I don't have this or that, but you really don't need much to start. You can start basic like this and then as you continue to grow in your spiritual journey, you will, you know, your altar will grow with you. As you grow, your altar will grow. And I used to say that a lot because when I first started my first altar, it was just a little plate that I kept, <clears throat> sorry, on the side of my bed with the candle and I believe a cup of water. That's all I had. And now I have a, a whole desk. And I want um, a big altar in the future. You know, I see those people who have, well, not those people, but some people who have um huge altars in their home so I, that's what i'm looking forward to but you have to start somewhere so this is a good setup um in the beginning you, again you really don't need all these crystals and and stuff like that if all you have is a candle and some water even if you just have a candle or just a cup of water that's fine to start with your ancestors are around you and within you you really don't need anything elaborate just to talk to them you know you could talk to them just like how you would talk to a friend so what is the purpose of an altar the purpose of an altar is to honor your ancestors and guide to love guide and support you in your life your altar is your sacred game piece so I like referring to your altar as a game piece because your altar is really like for me personally is where I do everything anything in my life where I feel like I need to talk to them I need some guidance I need help with my work anything like that literally from the smallest thing to the biggest thing you can go to your altar and you can talk with your ancestors and your spirit guides and they will communicate with you okay if I pause it's because I have notes and I'm just reading my notes as I go along so your altar is your sacred game piece. With everything you experience in your life, you can solve and manifest with your altar, no matter how big or small. Your spirit guides, your ancestors, angels, different beings, gods, goddesses, the most high God, no matter who you call on as your higher power, your altar is where you build these relationships. Your relationship is key. The stronger your relationship, the more you grow in your spiritual journey and the stronger you become. So the closer you are to your spirit guides, um, the more you grow in your spiritual journey, they can help you with literally everything. They are here to help you. They are who God gave us in this life um, to help us on our spiritual journey. And a lot of times we neglect them. You know, sometimes we acknowledge, oh, an angel is here or something like that. Your guardian angel. You have more than just your guardian angel with you. You have a whole team with you. They're always around with you. Okay. So, for those of you who are not as experienced in connecting with the divine realm, it's best to start with your ancestors first. They say start with your ancestors first because this is your family. Okay? And these are people who love and care for you. This is in your DNA. So, you don't have to worry about calling on different spirits and whatnot. Um, and you don't know them. You don't have a relationship with that spirit. You don't 
know who that spirit is, what they do, what they can help you with, if they're dangerous. You know, if you're not that experienced as far as connecting, and let's say you're not gifted, if you're not clairaudient, clairvoyant, um, clairsentient, if you don't have those type of gifts or you're, if you're still learning how to develop your gifts, it's best to just start with your family members because you know they will not hurt you. But it's also best to call on your loving and caring ancestors first because you have to um, be careful. We all have family members in our family who are not good, you know. So you want to make sure you have those in your family who support you the same way. Um, we kind of, we are with our, um, with our daily lives and our reality. You only talk to your family who you get along with, you know. You're not going to call your uncle or your cousin who um, hated you in this waking life. You know, they're not going to work with you properly or as efficiently. Um, some people do change when they, you know, transition. But that's a whole nother video. That's a whole nother story. But in this case, starting off, start with your loving and caring ancestors. And these are most likely the ancestors who are with you. Um on a daily basis helping you without your life they're the closest to you <clears throat> okay so an ancestor is anybody in your family no matter how old or young who has passed away they help you with just about any and everything about you so honor them and build your relationship these ancestors so let's say you have your mother that passed away she's going to be your ancestor you have um, even a child, your own child, your daughter, your son, they are considered your ancestors. Some people have the misconception that your ancestors are like from years and years ago and they're only called ancestor if they're like super old. No, these are people in your bloodline, your DNA. And remember, your bloodline goes way back. So not only are you calling on your known ancestors, you're calling on your unknown answers from hundreds and hundreds of years ago that's in your DNA so we re we all really have a whole team of people of spirit guides who are helping us and to build that relationship and to get them to help you and do more things for you and with you you start building a relationship so you honor them by creating them a space in your home this could be on your desk this could be on your dresser this could be as a little table as long as they have their own little space that's completely fine okay I have this just even if you start with a setup like this and it's just a little corner that's completely fine even if you don't have trust me even if you don't have anything at all just setting the attention that you are trying to connect with them and start a relationship they will come to you you will start filling them you will start receiving um, synchronicities and um, coincidences and stuff like that in regards with their ancestors seeing angel numbers the list goes on but start this altar to create a relationship to better help you with your spiritual journey and also your spiritual work if you are you know if you go down that path <clears throat> so again what do you need you need to start with the white candle they say start with the white candle because white represents purity white represents um clarity White is also an all-around color, so you can use white for any color when you're doing candle work or giving a candle, lighting a candle in the name of someone. Um, but white is all-around. White is like the number one go-to candle um, when you're doing any kind of spiritual work, okay? But it's best when you do get your candle. You see how I have um, these agents with me to help cleanse my area, so I would cleanse my candle with Florida water I will cleanse my candle with sage I will cleanse my candle with um, Palo Santo and just lighting it and rubbing it and holding on to it and setting the attention that my angels my ancestors my spirit guides are helping me cleanse all the energy um, all the bad negative energy that's on surrounding um, and was placed on the candle because you have to think about as all the hands that have touched the candle prior to you receiving it. There's energy and everything and energy always gets transferred. It never dies. It's never um, stagnant. So 
think about the factory workers, the people who handle the distribution and then the store and the people who are coming in the store and just touching and looking at it. You have to remove all that energy off the candle. And it's very true because I have clients who have gotten their own candles and forgot to cleanse it and the candles like explode or something scary, weird happens. You have to make sure the energy is clean and pure when it comes to working with it, especially when you're trying to work with your spirit guides. You have to remove that energy from the candle. So you're going to start with your candle. I don't know if you could tell, I have some herbs on the inside of my candle, but that could be for another video. Right now I have rosemary, I have um, pink Himalayan salt and a little bit of Florida water in there. That's just what I was guided to do for my ancestors, what they wanted. But you can dress your candle in herbs, oils, um, perfumes, stuff like that. But if, if you don't have that stuff, if you don't have anything and it's just a candle alone, that's completely fine. Don't feel the pressure that you feel like it has to be dressed because it, it really doesn't. Also, if you see, I wrote on the candle. I do this with most of my candles. I wrote, for my loving and caring ancestors... And then I wrote, thank you, I love you, stuff like that. But as you can see, I have all these little herbs in here. And that's just because they like the energy of it. They all, different herbs and oils represent different things. I also have this root beer candy because some of my ancestors like it. On my main altar, I have a whole um, bowl of candies and treats for my ancestors. And crystals because they can work through these crystals and use the energy and whatnot. So you also need a picture of your ancestors. If you don't have a picture of your ancestors or even if you just want to use one particular ancestor, that's fine. Make sure you have that picture. If you don't, it's okay. Again, if you do have a picture and you or someone else who is living is in the picture, they say it's best not to place a picture of someone who is living on your altar because the superstition is that their life will be cut short. I don't really believe in that, but just to be safe, I would just put the picture of the ancestor only. If you got to cut a picture to do so, that's fine. If you don't want to use the picture because you're in it or someone you know who is still alive is in it, that's fine. You don't have to use a picture again they are watching you as you are creating this space for them they're watching you as you are putting things together so they're like anxiously waiting they know again they're always around you and they always know so they know who you're talking to but sometimes you have to be direct in who you're speaking with especially if you're um especially when you're creating this altar because sometimes these altars depending on how well you are how well off you are into your spiritual journey they open portals as well so when you're opening these portals you have to ask for your ancestors your spirit guides to protect you okay a lot of times i have to be specific and i have to say only those who are called upon are welcome my loving and caring ancestors only my angels only my spirit guides who guide and protect me only again that's another video because that's just some protection that you need in anything you do you always ask for protection when it's coming to spiritual work because you don't want things to attach to you and come into your home so let me get back on track so your altar will grow as you get stronger in your journey so do not feel the pressure if you do not have an elaborate altar you will be guided by them through your intuition if you are not clear audience and you cannot see, hear, or feel them, they will guide you. This is when you have to put yourself in a meditative state and really pray. And um, again, this takes practice. This takes time. So don't get upset um, if it doesn't happen for you the first time or you feel like you have so much on your mind or going on in your life that you can't focus and quiet your mind down to feel. So just work on meditation. Work on 10 minutes at a time, 15, 20, 30 and then, you know, you grow as you learn. But if you're not clear audience and you cannot see them and you cannot feel them, try to get in tune with your intuition and your ancestors will tell you exactly what they want 
on their spiritual altar, okay? So, you can also start with dollar store items if you do not have these in your home. There's no perfect way. There's no type of quality that you need. The only thing that I will say that needs to happen when you are starting this is that you have to cleanse your area. So make sure you have your sage, your palo santo, your Florida water, and that you pray and ask for protection um, and to cleanse any energy on the items that you are using for your your ancestors, okay? And make sure your space is clean, okay? Your ancestors don't want to be dirty. They don't like dust. They don't like dirt. Not to say you have to clean your altar every day, but sometimes, like, for me, when I'm doing work at my altar, it might get, like, herbs everywhere um, and stuff like that. I'll probably clean my altar maybe once a week. I'll rearrange things. Um, making sure you change your water every day or every other day. You can also start with alcohol. If you know, let's say you have your father who passed and he liked to drink beer and chips. You can start your altar off with a can of beer and chips if you're calling your if you calling on that ancestor specifically but just to be safe you could start with water if you know they like alcohol go ahead give your family some alcohol okay now how to call on them to get their attention again if you're not able to if you're not um experienced in talking with spirits and stuff like that put yourself in a meditative state and then start calling them. I will say something like calling my ancestors loving and caring known and unknown. And I'll say that about three, four times until I feel peace, until you feel like the your space has changed as far as like if it gets um, cool air, if you get chills, if you sometimes even if you feel heat because you could feel their energy that way. But even if you don't feel anything, be confident in knowing that they are with you always and watching you as you're doing this. So don't be discouraged if as you're calling them, you don't see a sign from them. They will give you one later on, more than likely. Or when you're done setting up, you can look at your phone and you can like get an angel number or something like that. They will communicate and show you, <clears throat> sorry, in one way or the other, okay? So say that as many times as you feel is necessary. All right, so you could just start talking to them. There's nothing specific you need to say. You could talk to them like they are your best friend. Because when I tell you they know every detail about you, embarrassing, happy, good, bad, they know everything about you and they accept you and they love you because they understand what it means to be on this planet having a human experience. So don't be embarrassed or don't feel like you're hiding anything from them because there's literally nothing that you can hide from your guides. Just be honest, open. They want to help you. They love you and they accept you. Okay? Now, let's say you're done with your setup and you have your candle going. Leave your candle burning. Do not burn do not um turn off your candle. Any type of spiritual work you're doing, it's best to leave your candle burning. If you're in an area or a home where it's not safe to light a candle, that's an exception. All you have to do is snuff it out. So putting something over the candle, um, you know, putting it out, never ever blow it out. That's the that's the main point of this. Don't do not blow out any candle you're working with your own breath. Why? That's a lot of detail to go into, but it's just best not to blow out the um, candle because it's kind of like blowing out the energy that you put into this candle. So it's best to just snuff it. Okay. But if you can help it, let the candle burn down um, completely. They like the candle. They, they're they feeding off the energy that you put into it. So again, make sure it's in a safe place. Change your drinks every other day. You can add food to your altar, snacks, candy, trinkets, uh, favorite things. So let's say your sister passed and she had a favorite toy or she liked the color green. You can add that toy, those green things. Anything if you for your ancestors who are known, if they have things about them that you remember that they liked, add that to their altar. They will appreciate that. And you will start seeing the changes in your life. You will start seeing them being more obvious around you. You will see them guiding you um, to opportunities in your life. Okay. So, let's see. 
um, I guess that's it for now. The last point I'm making is make sure you're keeping it up, keep it clean. This is like inviting guests into your home. You want to make sure they're comfortable, you want to make sure they have food, you want to make sure they have water. This creating an altar is, I don't want to exaggerate it as saying it's like a child, but these are your spirit guides, these are your ancestors, they're helping you with all your desires, they're helping you with like removing negativity out your life, anything like that. So make sure you're taking care of them, change their water, um, if you're leaving food out for them, if you want to give them a plate of food, don't leave that food out for, for days and weeks, it's going to get old and they're not going to like that. So make sure you are um, taking care of them, okay? And that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. And I'll make more videos soon. Thank you.